And so for you to manifest, you have to build up, build up in prayer. Because there is a place you pray to where there are coals of fire. That's where your tongue will be touched. And if your tongue is taught, it will be poured. When you come back, you can become a prophet. To a dark generation. So beyond knowing about God, we must be clothed with the person of Christ. Until the world looks at us, we literally encounter God. This is what we make this conference to profit someone. And that's why we are redigging the wells of revival. I will show you what it means by three different illustrations. Tonight I will take one. We are in a dark world. We are in a dying world. A lot are not aware. So you don't know the implication of staying revived. Because what is happening in the world today is a deliberate intelligence of the demonic to obliterate the worship and the memory of God from a dispensation. It is beyond arguing for God. It is beyond talking about God. It has to be an ability captured by individuals to bring God on the scene if God cannot be seen, our messages will just be a product of human intelligence. And it will have no power in the presence of reality. Many pursue after knowledge. When you see people studying the scripture, they are looking for a message to preach. We are scholars of the scrolls. But the testimony of the life is lacking so there is no witness in the generation and if we continue that way the devil will not be threatened by many fellowships because it will be churning out more scholars that spend time on the crows because they want to wow of a generation with knowledge the devil knows because he understands the illuminations of light he dwelt in eden the mountain of god he knows when a bearer of light shows up, he's not threatened by men with knowledge. He's only threatened when men begin to come out as effulgences of the light and the illumination of God. This is why in the demonic realm, they don't bother so much to raise teachers. They rather raise systems that corrupt the heart. So there is nobody teaching about immorality, for instance. They don't need apostles of immorality. They don't need teachers of the doctrine of immorality. They need witnesses of immorality. So the devil enters a territory, he doesn't need to raise scholars. He raises ambassadors. And he may not even go to the land of the society. He will go to the people that have the capacity to showcase different dimensions of darkness. So when he finds a lady who is pretty, that lady is turned to a demon than a scholar who is ugly. Because if he manipulates that lady to showcase the tendencies of lust, the havoc that lady will create will be more than a scholar of the doctrine of immorality. So instead of wasting his investment, in reading books and teaching people, he will look for ambassadors. And a girl of 17 years can bring down 15 pastors. The pastors understand the knowledge, but they don't have the witness. The lady may not have so much knowledge, but everything about her is a witness. This is why we need to stay revived. I want us to journey this evening. But I also need you to understand where I'm coming from. While it's important for us to have the knowledge, we must understand that the knowledge is a gateway into the life. And if we don't journey into the life, we may end up becoming popular, but we have no witness. So you can have 
100,000 followers. All of them will be slaves of other spirits. They are only fans. And what they do is fanatism. They have not raised the generation. This is why testimony becomes so important when we do spiritual business. Everything we do, say, must become a gateway through which life goes. So when we talk about Ridigi, we are actually talking about the vertical journey back into the realm of Zion. We are talking about a migration from the sphere that is colonized by darkness, stepping out of the powers that hold men bound into the realm of reality for us to make contact for ourselves. It is that dimension we carry and present to a generation that is a testimony we are revived. The Bible said in Genesis chapter 1, it said, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. He said, And the earth was void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. When we talk about darkness, we are not talking about a shade. When we talk about darkness, we are talking about the government of spirits apart from God. So when he said darkness was upon the face of the deep, he wasn't talking about a shade that doused illumination. He was talking about a realm that is ruled by other powers on the revelation of the elements of the realm is a testimony of the spirits that were ruling the visible cosmos at the time. The sun can shine bright, but when a spirit talking about light is not referring to the brightness of the sun, he's talking about the dominating powers in the region. So a place can be bright, but it can be full of darkness. So when he talked about darkness covering the face of the deep, it means the witness and the testimony of God no longer existed in this plane. So when God showed up, the only things he saw were spirits that were of death. And everything about the visible realm that he created was a departure from the design that he fabricated when he created the realms. He said, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. There was a pattern that he established in the beginning. When he stepped into the visible realm, it was no longer consistent with the patterns that he created when he made the heavens and the earth. It was now a revelation of the intelligence of different spirits. There was a new architecture on the face of the deep. The places where God established his boundaries and his coordinates, another architect showed up and said, this shouldn't be here, and they all parted. So when God came, it didn't look like what he designed. So he said, darkness was on the face of the deep. And you know today, the dwelling place of light and darkness is not the visible world, it's in the heart of men. <laughs> the heart of men is the world of light and darkness. So when God steps into the realm now, is the heart of men he visits. He says, I the Lord, I test the heart and I try the reins to give to every man as his way should be. You can be in church and leading the choir and you can even be preaching just as myself is preaching now. But your heart may be full of darkness. So you can be a professional here but there is no life in what you do. Darkness is still on the face of the deep. 
Sometimes what will even motivate you to start a fellowship like this will be darkness. Because you looked around and you felt what will make you relevant is to start something that will give you authority over men. It is darkness. So you have begun your journey by darkness. They said they put eternity in their hearts. So the wall of light and darkness now is the heart of man. You know, there are many people that come to argue and say we don't need revival, that we are born again. <laughs> when you check your heart, you will know whether you need revival or not. Because every time darkness takes over the deep, God of necessity will have to come again and say, let there be light. the world but darkness was upon the face of the deep so there was a necessity for him to come and say let there be light it's a journey from darkness to light you know some of the things I want to share now they are if you don't have a walk in the spirit honestly it may sound heretic to you. I'm, I'm being careful. I'm weighing my utterances. Because of the audience I'm seeing. On, I'm weighing my utterances. It's more convenient for me to say these things in a, in a simple fellowship with my brothers and friends. I'm weighing my utterances. Because I want to talk to us about the vertical journey of the throne of God. The vertical journey. There is a horizontal journey but there is a vertical journey the horizontal journey is the journey of exploit but the vertical journey is the journey of intimacy you know the bible said the light shines in the darkness that's a horizontal migration so the light travel in the direction of darkness and subdues the darkness so when darkness moves in the left, the light goes in the left and douses the darkness. That means the government of God that is in the heart of a man dominates everything the devil is doing in every side of movement in the natural world. That's what we call impact. Impact is not fame. Impact is not popularity. Impact is actually a horizontal migration in the visible universe. Changing the sequences and the protocol of darkness and replacing it with light. So when a man is under the government of God, everything he does, God places him as an ambassador. And he travels along the path of darkness and changes what the devil is doing. That is impact. It's a horizontal migration. But... For the horizontal migration to give you relevance in eternity, you must also have a vertical migration. Because if you are only traveling horizontally, you can become corrupt. The devil knows as you move, you will interact with a lot of things. There are lots of bargains on the horizontal plane. He can come and say, if you are the son of God, turn these stones to bread. He is trying to test your appetites. When you go in the horizontal plane, you can start a ministry and say, I want to win one million souls to God. But as you are traveling, a point comes, there will be negotiations around popularity. If you want to become popular, add this, add this, remove this, remove this. That's a bargain. In the realm of God, power is the ability to stand in the presence. The, the princes of Zion they don't cast out devils they don't preach all they do is to stand in the presence holy 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 is the Lord we can stand on the mountain that's why when Lucifer violated the protocol of the realm the Bible said he fell when you lose height 
you lost everything. They turn into light. Those are the wells we dig. That's why a man can lock himself in a room for a whole month. It's not because he can't go out. It's not because there are no legitimate business to carry out. But I can't go far until I go high. So he has invitations. He is popular. But when he gets there, what is the message? The message is not what I read. The message is the breaking news of heaven. I come as a custodian of the oracles of God. If I don't stand in the presence, how can I dispense the oracles? You are mighty on your throne. He said, the part of a just is the journey of light. It's not from Lagos to Oshogo. It's not from Nigeria to America. It's from Earth to Zion. It's from Earth to Zion. The witnesses of God, when they stand upon the earth, their heads will be in heaven. Many times Jesus was invited and Jesus escaped from the conference. He preached the first night and the crowd increased the second night and Jesus escapes. He didn't preach for the radio. He was a witness. And many times when he escapes, the next place to find him is on the mountain. Because God is a flow. The one you met two seconds ago is no longer there. That's why two seconds ago, when Theophilus was worshipping, the glory of God came down. If you are still there, you are behind. Because God has left that worship. God is now bringing an emphasis of intimacy. I'm commending you to the fellowship of the divine. <laughs> oh, Shibaka Tekira. In Isaiah 35, verse 8, he said, There is a highway. He said, It's the way of holiness. He said, There no iniquity can stand. He said, Even a foolish man, if he enters that path, he cannot err. Is the government of light, the rulership, and the dominion of Yahweh. This is what qualifies us as witnesses. We are not preachers, but we witness through preaching. We are not teachers. We witness through teaching. The whole idea is to download God into man. Christianity has been truncated. So we reduce matters of life to rules and regulation. What is consecration? Consecration is not a life that is governed by rules and regulation, do's and don'ts. No. Consecration is living by the dictates of the realm you are walking in. Let me explain it to you. He said, hearing is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. Righteousness of God, the right standing with God, the government of God. He said it is revealed as you migrate from one level to another. That's what consecration is. You can see me, I'm not talking. And then you too say you won't talk much. You are joking. The realm where I'm walking from, dear men are forbidden to talk. That's why I'm not talking. I'm not talking because a minister should be quiet. I am not talking because it's a taboo. It is forbidden. 
the creatures in the realm where are broken into in light they don't talk until they are commanded so when i'm not talking i'm only giving expression to my nativity i come from a clan of light and that's the government there that's what consecration is about men traveling into different dimensions and they live by the government of those dimensions that's why what you can do if another christian do it is a sin and that's why i say whatever is not of faith is sin but because we don't travel what we call consecration consecration are the elements of christianity he said don't don't fornicate don't lie and he said i'm a consecrated believer fornication and lying was not part of the syllabus of the believer so that is not is not part of your consecration you were not designed to do it so when you are not lying you are not fornicating you are not living a consecrated life that's who you are but the corruption is too much so the things that unbelievers do when we tell christians to avoid it we call it consecration imagine you tell me not to bark and i say it's consecration i'm not supposed to bark i'm not a dog if i am barking it means i am i'm sick that's not consecration don't bark you are telling a man don't bark and the man say i'm living a consecrated life you say well, how he say i'm not barking are you supposed to bark many people have no consecration because they don't travel when you begin to migrate you begin to see laws because he said that god giving thanks to the father who have translated us colossians 1 12 and 13 from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son in light so where you are in this kingdom there is a government that regulates people there so all of us can be working for the government if you work in the oil industry your consecration is safe never bring light there if you bring anything fire you can't even enter with your watch you will drop your watch drop your handset anything that things explosion is not is forbidden so for nigerians working in the government in the oil sector their consecration is safety for nigerians working in the army their consecration is not safety their consecration is discipline so when a soldier a soldier shows up the witness that flows from him is discipline everything he does reveals discipline that is consecration but many don't travel so they have no consecration in their lives because consecrations are actually designed to preserve the realm that you carry but if you have no realm why would you be talking about consecration so many of us travel horizontally we don't travel vertically redigging the wells of revival is a journey from darkness back to light when i listen to what is shared in the body of christ I know that our Christianity is infant. It's an infantile Christianity. When we define things, it reveals where we are operating from. A pastor can preach on consecration for one year and is talking about sin. Are believers supposed to sin? Living above sin is called righteousness and is your nature. Consecration is functioning by the government of the realm where you are. A man can travel in light, and today it is forbidden for him to have money in his pocket and live a service without money. Every service he comes to, the law says, Empty your all. Because where you are standing, the angels that walk there don't have possession. 
So every time you are in God's presence, there's no property right. Everything you have is laid on the altar. A man can journey to a realm in light. It will be forbidden to make friends. For a season, no friend for a season. There are men in this world that don't look at the sun. If they tell you what's happening with them, you will say, Haba, now wow. You are talking like that because you've not begun to join him. When you join a time will come when even to eat will be a sin. And God will tell you for three months, eat only fruits. You can't explain it. That's the realm where you are. It's as you are doing it that your brethren in that realm will begin to educate you. And then maybe after two months, an angel will tell you the reason God said don't take food and eat only vegetables is because they, you are downloading a spirit called excellence. <laughs> you will now go and check your doctrine and say, where is it said that for me to download excellence, I should eat vegetables? You think excellence is a rule. You don't know it's a verb. Our Christianity is earthly. So we are scholars. We are wise. But we have no experience with God. That's why I say this is life eternal. That they may know Him. That they may explore the depths. The depths of God. You can be a Christian for 30 years. But you will not travel vertically. Men will respect you because of your coordination and comportment. But in the realm of the spirit, you'll be a babe. Because there was never a time when you had to, you had to be chiseled and shaped to fit into realms and dimensions. There are certain dimensions that your voice is too loud. They don't talk there. So they will chisel your tongue to enter that dimension. So you don't know what Christianity is about. You think it's about talking. This is what we define the body of Christ. So men say, there's nothing like a believer. You are born again. They are the righteousness of God. And everything that comes our way defeat us. If they say healing line, 90% of the church line up. He said he's running the deliverance service. And every Sunday they are delivering over 70 people. They are always puppets in the hands of them, demons. Because we don't move in the spirit. If I ask you what is sacrifice, what will you tell me? <laughs> ask people what they call sacrifice. They give an offering, they say it's sacrifice. Because we don't do business in the realm of light. I am coming to challenge you. Because these things are things that you should do can do and will do this is what the holy ghost prompts you every day there's a place you have to stand to bring your quota to your generation you have not journeyed too high when you travel into consecration you will discover there are two parts in this life the first part is the part of shining in darkness that's the part of exploit the second part is the part that shines brighter and brighter onto the perfect day that's the part into incorruptibility if you begin to journey with god a point will come when you will reach that junction you will begin to argue in your mind where should i follow that's where sacrifice begins sacrifice is a business in the realm of incorruptibility where people make choices that pertains to their ordination. This is what Paul was saying when he said, For me to live is Christ, to die is gain. The calling that Paul had was to walk in intimacy until he enters immortality. That was Paul's calling. He said in Galatians 2.13, 
what his desire was. And when he ended it, after he talked about the fellowship of his suffering, he said that he may be made conformable with him. That was Paul's destiny. Paul's destiny was a journey of intimacy. But when he came to Arabia, he had to make a choice. As he pressed him to God, the moment Paul gave his heart to Christ, he was separated. And Paul was in Arabia for undocumented number of years. But while he was in Arabia, he made a difficult choice. And God showed him, would you rather come into intimacy like Enoch? Or would you take this truth that I have shown you to the body of Christ? It was false law for his brethren that made him a preacher. The kind of witness Paul had for his generation was the witness of the endless life. In Romans chapter 10 verse 1 and 2 He said for his brethren's sake He wished that he was cursed And separated from Christ That was the kind of body Paul had for his brethren To see men come to the knowledge of the truth That was why Paul made the sacrifice Of joining away from intimacy To blessing the body of Christ That's what we call sacrifice A departure in God in order to satisfy an agenda in the calendar of God. But many don't travel, so we don't know spiritual things. <laughs> I won't talk beyond here. There's a woman called Anna Rontri, living in the world now. A blazing revivalist. If she talks to you for five minutes, you will weep for many days. A point came, her fame began to explode. And then God came to her and carried her to heaven and showed her herself in the sea of glass. And when she looked at herself, 70% of her was glowing with light, but 30% was dark. And he asked Jesus, Why is this part of me dark? And the Lord told him, I have not colonized that part of your life. She said, what? Me that say I love you with all my life. And he told Jesus, I will enter a pact with you to seek you all my life. That was how she dumped preaching. And began to pursue intimacy. That sacrifice. And right now, she doesn't go out of her house anymore. She has locked herself away until the coming of Christ or when she's taken away. That was why Paul said in 1 Corinthians 9 5, he said, Is it wrong for us to lead a damsel like Cephas and the other apostles? He said, No. But there was something that compelled Paul. So, marriage for him is not wrong. Doctrinally, we should marry. But this thing happening on his inside is drawing him too close to God that if he marries a woman he will be irresponsible towards her. You know many people don't realize their destiny until after they marry. Most of the pastors that end up in divorce they end up in divorce because there was a challenge. Their journey with God became deeper after they got married and suddenly every sensual desire dies. So their wives is like their sisters. They don't know what to do with them. <laughs> and because the women didn't travel that far, they don't understand what is happening. And for such a man, you know, when you begin to journey in consecration, a point comes where the realm you are walking in becomes more real than this world. And when that begins to happen to you, you are no longer governed by the laws of this world. You are governed by the laws of that realm. That was why Moses' face could shine. This was no longer the normal human skin. The realm where Moses was, con was, was communing, everybody glows. And the point came where unconsciously Moses began to glow. He's no longer governed by the laws of this realm. He has stepped into another law 
the government of that realm becomes stronger on his heart than the government in this world. And for every destiny to be realized, there is a measure of vertical height that must be attained. You wouldn't know when you thought what pursued you into ministry was love for souls until you migrate from love for souls into love for fame. And everything you do will be motivated by fame. You won't know when that happens. Unless you are traveling vertically. And your heart is censored consistently. And the realm of darkness that is clothing this universe now. Every believer must attain a measure of light. See, this is why we threaten believers with hell. Yet they don't change. Because we don't teach them how to journey into light. The energy of darkness is too heavy on their soul. When they are fornicating, they remember the advice we told them. They remember the threats. They remember the scripture. Yet, they can't hold themselves. There is another power ruling over them. The way to bring a witness, corporate witness to this world, is when corporately the body of Christ begins to ascend. There is a realm we get to. That we will naturally be purged because iniquity does not exist there. Now, if you tell somebody you are a Christian, say, Get out. What do you mean by that? Where are you standing? If you are not joining vertically, you have no witness. And if you are not joining vertically, then this conference is for you. You have to redig the wells. Redigging the wells is engaging light until you break into the realm of light. And you begin to migrate from one level of illumination to another level. How does the journey of light begin? Three things and then we'll pray. Most of us desire to be preachers. Most of us see ourselves doing great things. But desire is not enough. Before you step into any realm any calling even if you say you are called find out the cost because for that calling to shine that bright there is a journey that they embarked on in the secret place i was sharing with you fellows the other day many young people now mistress now sing like you fellows but the idea is not to like it's not to do it like is to become a dimension when i came into the apostolic clan i heard my father in the lord i said what is this i sat on his messages for eight months every day eight hours praying in tongues every month i dropped a seed a measure of his spirit rubbed on me and i became then if I'm talking, even if I cough, you think it's a Boswaro. And with that measure that I received, I stepped out and now discover when I do what I do after three weeks, the thing will vanish. And then I will become a dwarf again. Ah, I will shake myself as at other times. There's another person talking. I say, ah, what's this? I will now go back. Sit on the message. Another layer will rub off for of me. I will now come out again. If I, even if people gather around me at home, if I'm talking, Jesus Christ, they are like, what is this? Then after two weeks, I will exhaust the measure that came. And then I'll become myself. Even when I'm shouting, nothing is happening. I say, what is this? The Holy Ghost told me, you have not found yourself. Impartation can only bring a measure upon your life. That measure is supposed to drive you deep until you find yourself. Because every one of us must come into light. 
so that we see him as he is because when we see him we become like him not another man you can never become like another man let me show you four operations that happen when you come into light before I show you how to redeem the wells you know tonight is the first night I'm just taking time to cast these burdens so you understand the emphasis of what we are talking about in the realm of God in Zion everything as you see have a spiritual significance and it's not there for decoration this beautiful flower here is here to beautify this altar that's all it's doing it's not so in the realm of God everything that is installed in Zion has something it does that makes it and everything making contact with it to conform with God because the realm of God is actually a symphony of the essence of God reverberating through every operation in that realm so when they sing in heaven and you hear you won't hear a melody when you hear songs in heaven it will provoke intimacy with God. Everything in heaven draws you to the throne. The idea of the installations of Zion is to pull creation to the Creator until intimacy is achieved. When you come to the realm of light, you begin to interact with different installations there with different operations. That's why all of us read the Bible. But our calling comes from intimacy. Because that was how it was instituted. He said to the man, dress the garden, keep it. He said to Abraham, get thee out of thy country, out of thy kindred, out of thy father's house, to the land that I will show you. He said to Moses, get thee to Egypt and raise for me a people that they may worship me in the wilderness. It has nothing to do with what you read. What you read is a migration to the place where you hear his voice. That's why I say if you don't turn, you won't be relevant. You can become popular. You can become influential. It doesn't mean you are relevant. Because when they check the integrity of your work, is the degree to which it dispels darkness. Not the degree to which men clap. Somebody told me, you have many followers. One looked at my page and said, ah, oh boy, this is your page. Then they put fertilizer on top. Why they grow like this? I said, don't be moved. That's number. They are not human beings. <laughs> they are not human beings. Don't be moved. Because those same figures there, they are on many other places. It is not human beings. That's number. If you want to check what is happening, go and check in the spirit and find out the hard work you are doing to darkness. If it is true that you have entered the realm of light, you begin to interact with the installations of heaven. And I will show you some of them. One of the installations of Zion that you begin to interact with is the altar of the coals of fire. <laughs> fire is not running in church. Fire is not shouting when you are on the microphone. <laughs> you know this kind of fire, you don't see it with the naked eye, it's not visible. Is an intrinsic organic operation within the heart of a man. See, let me explain what I mean. In hell, which is the lowest realm of spiritual existence, fire torments. So the operation of fire in Hades is to create torment. On earth, 
the operation of fire is different from the operation of fire in Hades. The operation of fire on earth is to burn and to consume. But if you go higher to the realm of God, fire doesn't torment. Fire doesn't burn. Fire purifies. That's why I told you, every installation in the spirit has a purpose. So when a man begins to travel vertically, purification is natural to him. The reason is because he is interacting with an economy in that realm called fire. So Isaiah was a popular prophet. He was traveling horizontally all his ministry. Until a point came. He said, let me try what this upward ladder looks like. I have moved around the whole of Israel. Everybody knows me as a prophet. What happens if I travel vertically for a second? You know, he was popular among men. But in the spirit, he was not popular. Everybody knew him as a prophet. That's on earth. When he came to the spirit, nobody introduced him. He introduced himself. And the way the man introduced himself was strange. The title of a prophet was not attached once. He said, I am a man of unclean lips. He said, woe unto me. That's a popular prophet on earth. That's why I told you, horizontal journey is a risk. If there is no backing of the vertical journey, the day the guy began to travel vertically, he discovered everything he was doing horizontally was a cost from the realm of God. He said, I am a man of unclean lips. Woe unto me. But because he has journeyed upward, there was an economy that was activated. It was the economy of the coals of fire. And he said, one of the angels took one of the coals from the fire and touched his tongue. And his tongue was healed instantly. When a man begins to travel vertically, he will notice that many addictions will die on their own. Every day young people call you, they say, I'm masturbating, I'm fornicating. Don't waste your time praying for them. You know why? If you pray for them, you have set them up. Because when an evil spirit is gone out of a man, he moves about in dry places. If he doesn't find where to stay, it will return to where it was cast from. If it is kept and garnished but empty, the spirit will not enter. The spirit knows if he enters, the power that cast it out will cast it again. So the spirit will go and invite several more wicked demons. That means there are some demons in the buffet that don't have the habitat. If you know how many demons are waiting for accommodation who don't have yet, you will treasure your purity. Because one third of the angels fell. And there are over 100 trillion angels. If you know how many demons can be assigned to one man, you will work with God closely. In the allocation of the demonic, there are some that don't even have a location in your life. Because your morning is occupied, afternoon is occupied, evening is occupied. So some of the demons go to tell the principalities, please assign us in his dream. Even if we don't possess him, when he's sleeping, let's just enter his dream. At least have accommodation for the night. So in the daytime, a guy is fornicating, he's lying, he's doing all kinds of things. Even when he's sleeping, he's still fornicating. When an evil spirit is gone out of a man, it will return with several more wicked demons. So when somebody says masturbated and you cast out the demon and you don't teach the person how to become occupied, the next time he will not only masturbate, he will rape. So when people tell me they are masturbating, I tell them the reason is because where you are operating from, the demons of masturbation also have accommodation there. There is a place where there is no accommodation for the demon of masturbation. So come up here. You are living where demons live. That's why they have accommodation in your life. Come up here. And somebody is pastoring a church. Where there are many fornicators and they say we don't need revival. We are born again. <laughs> 
come up here. The sign that you are joining vertically is not how you feel when you are praying. Because some people when they are praying as they lift their hands, especially when you are fasting, even if the fan is blowing at you, the air will, the air will pass through the, the pores of your skin. And then because you are feeling air, you think you are in glory. <laughs> especially when you are praying with an overall or a jalabia and it's floating, you feel you are, you are, you are partnering with angels. You don't ascend because you feel it. The first sign that you are beginning to ascend is that you are purified from within you. The fires of God begins to burn every chaff and every installation of the devil in your life. You will find yourself a drunk, but all of a sudden you lost appetite for the same drink that you can't sleep without. Then you know that your migration is not only horizontal, you have taken the vertical journey. That's fire. A man has no fire until he sustains the testimony of purity. You know, we reduce fire in church to people shouting, ah, ah. We are joking. That's how some people shouted when they saw Michael Jackson. The operations of the sensual realm. When you are fire, you naturally begin to walk in purity. You will not know how it will happen. Because that realm is interacting with you. It will dominate you so much that it will activate the law of life that is in the spirit. So when you want to check, these are indicators that you are traveling vertically. You know, I share, I say sometimes when you want to define spiritual things, find out how spirits define them. Don't define things by, by the dictionary. If you read your dictionary, when you find the word love, it's usually translated either from iros, which is romantic love, or storge, which is companionship, or filio, which is friendship. All of that doesn't pass the test of spirit. When the spirit defines love, the only thing he recognizes is sacrifice. So Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandment. Law, love in the spirit is obedience. So you don't love until you can obey God. Don't come and tell God, you know I love you. Because the way you heard God's servant, share now. You too, you go somewhere to preach, you say, Lord. You know, if you remove my heart, you will see that I love you. Because you heard the phrase from another preacher. God doesn't need to remove your heart. He will give you an instruction. When you disobey that instruction, your whole heart has already been sensible. So, ascendance in the spirit is purity. That's why I said, who shall ascend the mountains of God? Who shall stand upon the holy hills? He said, they that are of a pure heart and of a clean heart, who have not lifted up their heart in vanity. It's because when you go hard, you must interact with the coals of fire. You can never dodge it. Those things are littered in the path of light. When a man journeys in light, he must be purified. That's what we call revival. When you break out from one government and you enter into the influence of another government. This one has nothing to do with church attendance. It has everything to do with standing in the presence of the Father. Where times of refreshing comes from. So if there is no testimony of purity in your life, your pursuit of God and everything you are doing in the kingdom is horizontal. And the devil is not threatened by horizontal travelers. Because he knows that at one point, they must succumb to his bargain. At one point. You know, he said, Jesus was tested at all points. So the devil will look for points on the horizontal bargain. is littered with temptation. But the way of victory is in the vertical journey. The second operation in the realm of light is the intercourse with the sea of glass. <laughs> he said there's a river that flows from the throne of God. He said the streams thereof, they make glass. 
the cities of God. The operation of the sea of glass is the impregnation with joy. Joy that is a defense against darkness. You know, Abraham was struggling with all kinds of affliction until he began to journey upward. And the point came, he said, Abraham staggered not at the promises of God through unbelief. He said he was strong in faith. How was he strong in faith? He said he considered not his body, now dead, yet the deathless of Sarah's womb. If you are in the vertical plane, you will see the facts. What shifts a man from the realm of fact to the realm of truth is a vertical migration. So the deadness of the womb is there. But Abraham can't consider it anymore. He is seeing something in light that blinds him from the physical. So he said because of that, he didn't stagger at the promises of God. He said he was strong in faith. How? Giving thanks. He was impregnated with so much joy that he couldn't notice the mockery of men anymore. They say, how oh, can you change your name from an assumed father to the father of kings when your wife has not given birth to one? He said, glory to God. I am the father of nations. There is a joy that secured his heart so much that nothing happening around him moved him anymore. That's the operation of the sea of glass. That the waters of the throne floods your soul until you cannot notice anything the devil throws at you. You have become like Mount Zion that cannot be moved. It's an operation of the realm of God. Some people, something happened to me the other time and somebody called me. He, he said uh, he wants to encourage me. Say, if I wait for your encouragement, I will die. David encouraged himself in the Lord. David knew the economy of the sea of glass. So even when everybody deserted him, he went back somewhere to mingle again with the waters of eternity. So even if you choose not to encourage him, such men come fall. They have gone deep. The waters that sustain them is not in the surface. It comes from the throne. These are operations of vertical joint. A lot of people don't believe. When you talk, they say, every man is encouragement. That's true. If you are a man, and if you are only a man. But the new creation is not just a man, it's a God man. <laughs> I can't share some things. Paul said, we preach mysteries among them that are mature. There are certain things we will talk in the cloud it will trigger controversy so you leave them after all when john went to heaven he wanted to write what the voice of the seven thunder spoke they said don't write it if you tell men they won't believe only those who travel here know it meanwhile there are christians that they will have to encourage every day because everything breaks them but when paul went there they told him be anxious for nothing but in all things, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, God is in your heart. You see where Christianity moves from sentimental talk, oratorial talking, into reality. If these things are not happening in your life, just know, because these are not things that are given by impartation. They are given by migration. By ascensions. Imagine the life Jesus lived. Everybody wanted to kill him. Even his brothers did not believe him. Yet there was not one day that the man was down. He knows as ascension. To redeem the worst revival is to travel towards God. And it's a journey that is continuous and progressive. Are you learning something? What I want to share with us this night is how to travel. Unfortunately, I can't even talk about it. I'm just showing you the indicators of healthy Christian living. 
There are certain people they wake up to pray. They are agile from morning to night until they want to pray. And then they say, Father, thank you. You know, I love you. Uh, thank you for everything. And they sleep. He's watching a movie from 6 p.m. to 12 midnight. Six hours. He's lying on the bed. He's holding the phone with the hand. You didn't even notice that your hand was, was paining you. You were so engrossed in the movie that you could bear the pain of holding your phone for six hours. But the moment you say, Father, I love you. And then you collapse into your realm. Meanwhile, there are certain men, they come back from work tired. Their back is aching until they say, Holy Spirit. The moment they say, Holy Spirit, they move. The devil knows. Men in the Old Testament knew this operation. That there is something that energizes beyond food. He said, they mount up with wings. Where do the wings come from? Where do they come from? How did this man know so much? Who taught them so much mysteries? Because they journeyed in the spirit. Our Christianity today have discouraged journeying. People can come to church from January to December and every Sunday they live by prophetic words. When will you travel? When will you travel? How far will you go? Let me tell you, when we are raptured to heaven, it's not everybody that heaven will be new to. Make no mistakes about it. Heaven will not be new to everybody. Many travel there while they are in this earthly garment. And those who have not seen it visibly, they know all of the elements of Zion. When God appears, they know. Because they have entered many conferences in Zion. They know. This is life in the spirit. Christianity is not a religious, it's a movement. It's life in the spirit. When you emphasize this thing, people say, it looks as if you have been too spiritual. Somebody called me and said, all your messages are too apostolic. I say, you think it's apostolic because you don't know where we are in the calendar of God. And you have no understanding of the agenda of the devil. Most of the demonic policies that has crippled the gospel in many nations were, were propounded by Christians. Because they gathered Christian and Christianity for them was a game of number, not a game of stature. People who know nothing about witness will litter them on chairs in churches, in large auditoriums. And when they come to a place where witness becomes the divide between light and darkness, they take side with darkness. If they give you one billion today, can you still come for prayer meeting? If they gave you 100 million naira today, can you still participate in the 21 days retreat? A young man heard my messages and he came and said, Potters, angelic dimension. I say, have you seen an angel before? I say, what is a potter? I say, better go and look for God so that you'll be a witness and not a philosopher. You know, I like the way it was captured. It's called redigging. It's a digging. It's not jumping into where, it's to dig the where. Because most times the west will be covered by the Philistines. You dig there, you dig to find it. When you come into the realm of light, the third thing you interact with are the crystals of Zion. You know, the Bible said, <laughs> when John looked upon his countenance, him that sat on the throne, he said he was covered by Jasper and Saddam. That's how God reflects his mysteries and his dimension. Because God is light. 
And the Bible said he is light that cannot be approached. By reason of the understanding of light that I have, when light wants to give reveal itself to you, it reflects or refracts itself. That's why when you see a diamond, for example, in the night, everywhere can be dark. But if you flash one light torch, one torch light, the diamond can interact with that light and turn it to another direction. So you see light shining. So you can be standing somewhere very dark. The diamond can reflect the light and you will see it. So the dimensions of God are too intense for creation. If God comes into creation, creation will collapse because of the energy. So what it does is that he reflects his dimension in packets. That's what the crystals do. So when you come to Zion, you will begin to know him experientially from glory to glory. So when people don't have the knowledge of God, it's because they don't journey vertically. You can read books until you become a philosopher. You will not know God. I have five operations here. But I will stop here. The question tonight is what direction are you traveling? What is the direction of your sojourning? Are you a vertical traveler or you are a horizontal traveler? Are you a Christian that preaches to everybody yet have no stamina in the presence? Everything you say, did you hear it from another person? Or you have heard something in the spirit for yourself? When was the last time God gave you an instruction? When was the last time you journeyed from the power of a, weak, a weakness that you have and entered a realm where you could not be limited? When was the last time God came to you? and gave you a commandment for your generation what is the direction of your migration that is my contemplations for you tonight are you a witness or you are just another preacher the world have heard too many preachers and that's why in the last day he said, he make it his angel spirits. He said, but his ministers, flames of fire. Tonight, I only came to show you the direction me I will be traveling in the course of this meeting. Tomorrow night, I will bring you my own witness. My witness is the witness of fire. And by the time I make sure you understand what I mean, then I will be willing to open my dimensions. So when you interact with it and you depart from the conference and it begins to place government on your life, you will know these things are happening to me because of the things I touched. Because some of you, when that fire comes upon you, you will leave a lot of things. Some of you will be wasted for God. I'm telling you. Some of you, your ambitions will be seized out of your hand. And God will make you to travel in the path where you don't know tomorrow until you come before Him. He's the only person that will tell you the direction that you will go. It will establish a new government in your soul. Bow your heads and talk to God. And tell Him you are willing.